Welcome everybody to backfilling day for the foundation. If you don't know why we waited this long to backfill, you need to watch the last video before this one. As part of this backfilling project, we have a special guest, Jeff Hebner, who is our geotechnical engineer, who gave us really bad news back in the rainy season when we first started this thing. Well, essentially what you, you, what you did was placed a, a building pad that was in really good shape. And then we had a combination of rain and then just foot traffic, people walking in, walking out, walking in setting up forms and doing things like that, things got softened. So uh, you did the right thing at the time, undercut the foundations about a foot. I want you to cut to the point where you'd undercut the softened soils, replaced it with stone. Now you had a platform to work off of. You came out here, you poured the foundation concrete, and then you're in pretty good shape. Right. And so non-structural is inside the crawl space. If you remember, we have a, a two inch slab over three inches of insulation, over six inches of more rocks, 57 stone. Mm -hmm. And that's not structural, so it's not something that Jeff necessarily consults on. But now when there's rain coming down and we have to wait to backfill, as you already understand how, why that had to happen, rain can come underneath the footing through the gravel and then come all the way across the house through the gravel and then eject through the other side through the gravel. There's this kind of subterranean river that was built. The velocity was not an issue. It was just that water kept coming out in a few places and it was just a constant worry to me. So it wasn't hard enough to really eject up the gravel underneath, which is good, but it still was really just very unnerving to me to have water moving underneath the entirety of the house. Have you ever seen anything like this before, by the way? Well, of course. People waiting this <clears throat> long to bury the footings. Uh, yes, of course. Okay, I, good. I've been around for longer than I like to admit. So yeah. <laughs> I'm glad seen, to know at least one other person I, did this. I've seen a few things like that. Uh, <laughs> used a few terms like eject and underground river. I probably wouldn't use those terms. <laughs> you're the consultant. Um, you're not supposed to There was some uphill seepage that found a path uh, to transmit water around and in some cases, isolated cases below. But it appears that it hasn't done any permanent damage. You backfilled and, and, and repaired some of the areas of stone. So uh, it looks, from what I'm seeing today, like things are fine. Awesome. And so, it's exposed right now and you can see that we finally dug back down below all this stuff. There was gravel up against all of this all the way around the house and we spent the last week digging it out. Now that we can see everything and we're at the point where we're backfilling, I'm very relieved. I'm relieved to have my expert <laughs> come by and just say hello and take a look at things and say, yeah, okay, good job. Pat on the back. I'm Not sure like the last, last six to seven months were <laughs> difficult, but uh, now we've got sunny weather and yeah. things look pretty good. Right. And yeah. I will say, I don't know if I've said this before, but I would much rather have been at the rainy season when we first started, even though that was hugely suffering laden, than to be at the rainy season right before we got this thing closed down. Because yeah. the it rotting the wood would be a totally different nightmare. To my left, you can see the R12 three inch thick rock wool layer that's around the foundation wall. And to my right, you can see the geofabric that's going on, wrapping a burrito of gravel and also then protecting the rock wool on its way up. This geofabric is basically plastic. It's a woven plastic sheet that's meant to go underground. That is what its purpose is. What it does is only allow water through. It does not allow dirt and little pieces of sand and things like that that are eventually gonna clog up my drain tile. This is a really important step. If we were to just put dirt up against the drain tile, it gets clogged. And in a year or five years or 10 years, it doesn't matter. It will stop working, period. This is the way to make sure that the slotted drain tile, which is my drainage system for the foundation, and also the radon system, which we're gonna get to in future videos, that that never gets clogged up with silt and sand and clay that we have a lot of around here. So this is your high performance layer cake that we showed on the inside of the house continued outside the foundation. What we have here is the geofabric, which is only gonna let water through. It is protecting a big burrito of 57 stone gravel. Water can percolate through this and get into my slotted drain tile, which is that gray drain at the bottom of the wall. It's also protecting my insulation, which is on the outside of my walls, which is always a better way to insulate because it's continuous. It's gonna help protect all the stuff that's on the backside of it. Behind this, of course, is the drainage layer on the foundation wall. It's a dimple board that's keeping the water away from the foundation wall so that it doesn't just sit up there and soak right through the concrete. Here is the pile of old bricks that are what we need to make sure that the geofabric isn't gonna move while we're 
pouring the gravel down. And here is the about 3,000 pounds of sandbags that we had put in front of the house in a line, a double line, to keep mitigating that water flowing down and around and under the house. This we're starting to take away because once we're graded up, we won't have to worry about that anymore. So these have served their purpose. Now I can use the sand inside them to do things like encapsulating my plumbing and making everything nice and cozy for the things that we're burying underground. Now I present to you a backfilled house. Now that this is done, it's gonna be a lot easier for me to feel comfortable taking a day off, to make videos that don't have anything to do with this house, to do more consulting work, things like that. So just so you know to stay tuned and please do subscribe so that you can do that. The next things that happen are we cut the holes into the uh, sheathing for the windows and doors. We're gonna install the thermal buck. We're gonna install those Alpen windows and doors. We're gonna install exterior rock wool insulation on the above grade walls. We're going to uh, install the eaves, and then we're gonna be uh, moving on to the interior insulation and the interior air tightness layer, which is the Intello. Make sure to comment, like, subscribe. Tune in next time.